The good news is it looks like it's going to be a whole lot easier to fix the bump stop issue that we're having with this suspension setup. It's going to be a whole lot easier to fix the rear bump stops than it was the front. The front was a nightmare, but it looks like with the rear, it only moved over like two and a half inches. So all we really have to do to fix the issue is cut off the original landing point that I welded onto the axle for the bump stop. We have to cut it off and just weld on a longer one, like a two inch longer one. And that should solve the issue. It's gonna be a whole lot easier than what it was with the front. We don't have to modify this. We can leave this alone, thankfully. So it, yeah, it's a whole lot easier to fix than the front. So we finally got the bump stops to work with the full articulation side to side of the suspension as well as just normally up and down. So now we can actually uh, put the shocks back on, put the hubs and tires back on, and then next we get to work on steering. Now this is kind of something I've been not looking forward to on this project because it's kind of going to kind of be difficult. Uh, I'm going to try to do just a normal steering setup using just a normal rack and painting and steering linkage. No, I'm not using hydraulic. No, I'm not using electric. Electric's too expensive. Hydraulic's too complicated. Let's try this setup and see if it works. And if worst case it doesn't work, we can always try an another way to do it. But let's, let's try just normal steering and normal rack and pinion first.
Alright, so the rack and pinion is installed on the axle portion. We got it connected to the steering wheel and everything seems to be working. So the next thing we need to do is connect the rack and pinion to the spindles. And I'm going to be using these. these. These are what come with this rack and pinion. Hopefully these are strong enough because these are actually designed for a go-kart. But I'm going to use them anyway just because it's what I have and I just wanted to get this thing working. So we got to cut these to size. This one, th this one we have to shorten. And then the one over there we have to lengthen by like a foot and a half. Alright, the steering is installed. It works, but it's a little complicated, I'll admit. There is one, two, three, four, five steering U-joints connecting the steering wheel to the rack and pinion. So it's kind of, you know, it, but it does work. I, I was able to use two of these uh, telescoping steering columns from Go Power Sports. One is here, the other one's there. I did try to line up the uh, the U joints for the steering right there and right there with the hind joints, therefore there isn't that much movement in and out, but it does have telescoping steering columns, so that's going to be able to move in and out uh, to accommodate for any misalignment with that. So that it should work through the whole suspension movement and everything with the suspension and not have any binding up issues. Now I did have to make the steering wheel removable because it's kind of already really hard to get in and out of this thing, I'll admit, but uh, in, in adding this kind of made it even harder to get in and out, so I did have to make the steering wheel removable. This is just a uh, quick release I bought off of Amazon, go-kart quick release and it makes it semi-possible to get in and out of this tiny little thing and you gotta sneak your leg around there and it's, it's not really that comfortable, but at least it works. I, I'm not building this thing for comfort and trust me, it is not comfortable. I'm trying to make it as small and compact as possible, which is always a challenge. Now, now that the rack and pinion is installed on the front axle, we need to add a bunch of cross bracing to it, just a bunch of more, bunch more tubing to strengthen it up, because right now it kind of flexes a lot with, uh, doesn't really have that much tubing connecting everything, so we need to add a bunch of cross braces, cross bracing, more tubing to that, to strengthen it up.
That's ridiculous. <laughs> I gotta get a different angle on this thing. Oh, this thing is ridiculous. So I had a thought, after I added these, what if I do something similar to this, like how I did on the, C on the back of the CBR1000 project. How I have the louvers, I guess you'd call them. They aren't really louvers, but they look like it. Like on the CBR1000, I thought about doing something similar to the back of this. Basically just take 3 quarter inch tubing, weld them like this, and then weld them on the frame like this, and then the further it goes uh, this way. It gets either bigger or smaller. I thought about doing it on the top or on the back like this or doing both. I'm kind of thinking, now that I look at it, I'm kind of thinking of just doing the back and leaving the top to do some type of something like this or something. I'm not really sure. What do y'all think of that? Should I do louvers on the back of this like how I did on the back of the CBR1000 or should I do something else? Let me know what y'all think of that. So. We're getting some pretty good amount of work done on this project. We're getting pretty close to being able to fully disassemble the frame, weld it all together, and then start working on the pedals. We got the steering in place. We got some. Uh, we got the uh, rear and the front axle assemblies almost finished. I still need to add a couple more things in here and there. Is that all we got done in this video? I think so. As as well as uh, you know finalizing the placement and everything, getting the rear bump stops to work properly. So we're getting some pretty good amount of work done. Now we do have to figure out, uh, one thing I've been trying to figure out is how we do controls on this project because we don't really have that much leg room on this thing. As far as controls, we have clutch, we have brakes, throttle, and gear shifter. Two, actually two gear shifters, one gear shifter the motorcycle engine and then another gear shifter for the transfer case. Transfer case can just be just a knob that's, you know, right in between my legs. Gear shifter, brakes, gas, and, and clutch are going to kind of be an issue because we only have room for two foot controls, but we need four. We have four controls basically. We can either have my left foot being either clutch or gear shifter. But if it's a gear shifter, where am I going to put the clutch? 
And where am I going to put the, it? It, it kind of makes sense. This is the way that I'm probably going to do it. It makes sense to have the left foot being brakes, right foot being throttle, and then gear shifter, just a normal gear shifter that I, knew, that I do on most of my vehicles, and then have the clutch be a hand lever, basically just like on the motorcycle engine. So clutch, gear shifter, brakes, throttle, steering, and then in between my legs is going to be the transfer case gear shifter. So I'm pretty, I, I think that's how we're going to have to do the, gear, the controls in this thing. There isn't really that many other options for that, so... Yeah, anyway, well, that's going to have to be for the next couple of videos of this project. For now, i got to end this video here. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you in the next video.